Well, we've already talked to Shannon about the race and yeah. uh, your decision to leave uh, at that point and just getting ready for what was to come. Just talk about the race generally. First. Yeah, I, I felt like kind of split feelings about how slow it started out, but I thought stay on the outside and just stay in a good position and you know, you can kind of control a little bit of it from the front and everybody knew DeBabo was going to come whizzing by and then at that point you want to get on the pace. Um, so anyway, that's kind of early on and then uh, with about 700 to go, I'll have to watch the replay. Um, I was kind of pushed into the traffic and um, somebody clipped my heel and I lost my shoe. So. I, you know, I tried to stay as much as I could into the race, and I had my shoe on, like, on my toes, and I'm, like, gripping my toes really hard, trying to keep my spike on as long as possible, because it's so hard to, like, run, you know, that fast, and, like, it's not even about the speed, it's about, like, changing, or, um, changing pace, you know, it's really hard to, like, get that aggressive, like, go with Zababa when you don't have a spike on, so I tried to grip my toes and keep it on as long as possible, um, but eventually just had to give it up, and... I probably had about 600 to go. I'm guessing because like yeah. it's a race is a little bit like a car crash. Like how do you remember exactly what happens? So, um, but anyway, I think with about 600 to go, I totally lost it. And you know, different moments, I really tried to like re-engage and like say, I can do this without a shoe. I can do this without a shoe. Other people run well without a shoe. But I think for me, 600, 700 meters was just too long. It was just too long to. You know, my foot started to really hurt, and I'm trying to like dig in with my toes and. At that point, you're thinking about your shoe and not the race, and anyway, it was just really unlucky. Well, I'm struck by it. It would almost become more of a mental battle for you than a physical battle, and, and that was the one that you just couldn't... Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm all, you know, you're also like kind of in shock. You're thinking like, should I stop so that I can race next week? Should I keep going? You know, because you don't want to like injure yourself. Um, and, and again, like if it had been 300 to go or 200 to go, I think it would have been a different story. But having that long to kind of deal with uh, your foot flat on the track, I don't know, maybe I'm gonna go back to wearing socks <laughs> with my spikes. But yeah, I just, I, I just, I, I didn't have it. You know, and even with like 200 to go, I kept saying like, still finish so you can be proud of yourself. Finish strong, finish strong. Um, and I just couldn't, I just couldn't kick with everybody. So it was, it was hard. And you're, and you're the last American through the zone tonight on a night that no one reaches the podium. It was a tough night for Team USA and uh, just in a lot of different ways. We've been asking kind of what do you take away personally from this and just generally, you know, what's your way for? Um, well, yeah, for me personally, I've achieved so much and I'm so grateful and I have to be because, you know, you can come to a championships and you can have something unlucky happen and you, I'm in the best shape of my life and you don't make the podium. And so the fact that I have in the past, I feel really grateful for that. I think personally, I feel in this moment, I mean, I'll have a lot of emotions, but in this moment, I feel more sorry for all the people that have dedicated so much to getting me here. You know, I'm on the track and I know that the effort I'm putting in and I know whether I could have or could not have kept going and kicked with everybody with or without a shoe. The people that, oh, the people in Boulder and my my husband and my coaches and even the people that like cheer me on around one of the lake loop you know just stuff like that like those are the people I feel sorry for like I feel like I just really wanted to give them something to cheer for for tonight so that's the hardest like emotion for now but as far as the whole team honestly I I, I can't accurately comment because I've been focused so much on my own race I don't even know really a lot of the results that have happened so far in the meet so um, I get to start being a fan tomorrow <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks. Jenny, you know, I yeah. really like Nobeline, so, you know, I'm so they, they co she closed at 157. You know, like, Thank you. Obviously, your shoe fell off. That's probably not your type of race, right? I mean, what's your 800 PB? Well, I don't think an 800 PB has anything to do but with how you can close in a 15, and I think that I've shown that over the years, and not just me, but other people have. But, um, I mean, 157, I don't know, because, like, obviously, in a way, there were moments after... You know, I, I wasn't in it, so I, I don't have a gauge on how she did. But 157, that's ridiculous. I mean, they might, they may or may not run 157 in the women's eight. So, um, yeah, that's crazy. And it's crazy that it was 157, and the like finishing time was 408. So, you know, it, it, it it's yeah, it's interesting. I'll be interested to rewatch the race. It was, what was the strategy kind of coming in? The strategy for me really was to not let anyone run away from me. You know, to really like go with. 
you know, feel calm, confident, feel calm, stay in touch with the front, um, and and you know, respond smart. I think I have really good racing instincts. I think I did all the way, uh, you know, as as long as I had control of my own situation in the race. I think I made good decisions. Um, and then, yeah, it was really like, you watch the semis and you know Dababa eventually, whether the race is fast or whether it's slow, eventually she's going to take it and do her, you know, it's the Dababa show, you know. And so, trying to stay in touch with that and see if I can recreate Stockholm from last year was really uh, the, the plan. So, I'm, I'm sad I didn't get a chance to try and execute it. And the shoe got someone from behind? Someone from yeah, the back yeah, you clipped so, you or something or what? Yeah, I got my... Somebody spiked it, and it came off, and initially was like under my foot, and then I like tried so hard to grip with my toe to keep it on, but my shoe was off, and then eventually I just had to like let it go. So you don't so. wear socks, right? When you're no, I spikes. don't, and so my foot is kind of torn up. So I need to get some medical and get it cleaned up because I got another race to. Is that Zurich or Brussels? Run. What is it? I'm gonna run Zurich and Brussels. Yeah. Well, there's so. two. Yeah. Let's Hopefully hear. I can beat some of these people out there. What's the biggest takeaway from this championship heading into an Olympic year? I mean, the biggest takeaway is to be grateful for the success I've had, you know, because tonight wasn't a fair fight. It was like, and, and it's it's no fault of mine or, or whatever, but it's it's still unlucky. And so I didn't get a fair shot, in my opinion. You know, the stars misaligned for me, and I didn't get a fair shot to try and podium. But that's sports, and sometimes it happens, and so I'm grateful that I have uh, some success behind me and not just the medals but other races you know and good people around me so that I can watch the sunrise tomorrow morning and get ready for the next race yeah yeah I mean that's exactly it there's nothing you can do and so you know sometimes you're in the best shape of your life and you get a cold two days before the cross-country national championships or something you know so that's why I feel really grateful because I've had at least twice in my career at this meet where things came together really well. And so I was just unlucky. Yeah.